This video is about transimpedance amplifiers. It corresponds to the first part of chapter 23 through section 23.1. The basic idea of a transimpedance amplifier is that we have an input current and an output voltage. Hence the transimpedance and that the output over the input is voltage over current. So the gain is going to be in ohms. The way we make a transimpedance amplifier is a negative feedback amplifier where the input goes directly into the negative input of the amplifier and then we have a feedback resistor. The positive one is set to a fixed or perhaps adjustable bias voltage. All right, what does this thing do? Well, first thing you should realize is that a negative feedback amplifier is going to try to keep the negative node being the same voltage as the positive node. So it's going to keep the input port at V bias. So it is applying a bias voltage to the input port and the output voltage is going to be just the input voltage plus the current. And we'll draw the current going this way through the resistor times the resistance. So what we have is it's the bias voltage plus the IR drop. And if you think about this, what is the output? It's derivative with respect to the input. So if we look at what's dV out dI, well, V bias is a constant, so that's not going to change anything. And the derivative of IR with respect to I is just R. So the gain of this transimpedance amplifier is just the size of the feedback resistor. So, very handy device. Um, these get used all the time at UCSC for things like nanopores and nanopipettes. Sometimes if you have a high gain version of a transimpedance amplifier, it's referred to as a patch clamp amplifier. Uh, that's because the patch clamp uh, amplification was an early electrophysiology application of transimpedance amplifiers. Um, now the um, size signals that we'll be looking at um, are a little bigger than you see in the nanopipettes and um, the nanopores. So the nanopipettes you know, we're generally working with um, 10 to 100 picoamps and you need a resolution of about 0.5 picoamps um, and that's well, actually, those those more for nanopore, nano nanopipettes, nano because they have bigger holes, may may be doing ten or even a hundred times that current. But those are still very small currents, um, and we would have a hard time working with that in the simple breadboard designs that we're dealing with, because stray currents that we get from just having our hands near the uh, amplifiers are going to be larger than that. So. Um, we're not going to be dealing in this class with the low noise design you need in order to deal with very small currents. But we do have some applications uh, for transimpedance amplifiers. One is uh, if we're looking at a photodiode. Okay, we connect one end to ground and we connect the other one up to our phototrans our transimpedance amplifier. So this is our photodiode. And now what we've got is something that takes the photocurrent here, multiplies it by R, and adds it to the bias voltage. And we are keeping the diode at a constant bias voltage so that uh, the gain here is uh, fairly simple to deal with. We don't have to worry about different bias voltages on the diode changing its characteristics. We can do the same thing with phototransistors. We can have our bias voltage 
our trans impedance amplifier and a photodiode, a phototransistor. Uh, for this, we'll have, again, a gain of R here. Um, and because the phototransistor has much larger currents than a photodiode, we may not need to get as much gain out of our uh, trans impedance amplifier. Okay, uh, one other little thing that's worth noting is that this trans impedance amplifier does not need to have just a simple real gain. We can do something where we've got the bias voltage going into the plus input, input going in to the minus, and we could put, for instance, a resistor and a capacitor in parallel. Well, what is the impedance of this thing? Well, it's um, 1 over 1 over r plus j omega c, or multiplying top and bottom by r, um, r over 1 plus j omega rc. So that's the complex gain of this amplifier. Um, and you can check that the units are correct, because j omega rc, omega is in uh, radians per second, RC is a time constant in seconds, so those cancel and you just get unitless radians. And you have R over 1 plus something unitless, uh, that's just going to be in ohms, so the units are correct here. Um, at very low frequencies, when omega is close to zero, much less than RC, uh, this is just going to have a gain of R, so that's the DC gain. And uh, as omega goes to infinity, when it's much larger than RC, this is going to have a gain of uh, 1 over uh, j omega c. So it's going to behave just like a capacitor. And that's essentially a low-pass filter. So you can do a trans impedance amplifier that's got a fixed gain r, or you could do one which has got a low-pass filter gain. Um, you can also put a potentiometer in, in place of the resistor. If you put a potentiometer in here, you can have an adjustable gain trans impedance amplifier. So basically anything that we can do with a regular voltage amplifier, we can do with a trans impedance amplifier also. Okay, that's uh, enough for uh, the first part on trans impedance amplifiers. Uh -huh.